Hey everybody, uh, happy Wednesday. Coach Jeff back with you here today. And what I want to talk about in this video, and it's kind of a sensational headline, I know, but what I want to talk about is really the basics of how to run faster. And specifically, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, training paces and why training faster or training harder, more specifically, like training harder, might actually not be better for you. And if you've followed Runners Connect for a long time, followed our coaching, you know, we really preach that. We really preach slowing down on your easy runs, keeping your easy days easy, and specifically talking about how that training harder is not actually training better. And I kind of want to explain some of the research and the science behind why that is. Um, that way you can apply it to your own training because I always find that that works a little bit better for me. So what we're going to do in this video is it's going to be two sections. Uh, the first section I'm going to talk about um, the kind of the foundation for uh, how you progress fitness wise with running like what's the most important aspect and why it's difficult to do and then I'm going to talk specifically about how running faster or harder uh, is, isn't necessarily better as it relates to that foundational principle <music> So to get started, the primary foundation of your running fitness or your running performance is going to be your aerobic system. And that's because for almost every race distance from the mile to the marathon or ultra marathon is going to rely primarily on the aerobic system as the primary energy system you're going to need in order to run faster. The stronger your aerobic system, the faster that you're going to be able to run, whether it be a 5K or a marathon or an ultra. So the aerobic system is, is primary importance. So that means most of our training needs to be focused on that. So for example, in the uh, marathon, you're talking about 95 to 98% aerobic. And that means you want a vast majority of your training to be or to, to touch upon that aerobic system in some way or shape or fashion. Now, the difficulty with training the aerobic system is that it's very, very slow to develop. And that means the, the time it's going to take you in order to actually get fitter and see progress is going to take a while. And part of that reason is that when we look at the uh, physiological elements that contribute to aerobic fitness or gaining aerobic fitness, we can see that they, it's, it's difficult to progress them. So I'm going to give you an example. The mitochondria are uh, really an important part of the kind of aerobic process. They really um, are the microscopic organelles uh, that are found in the muscle cells that contribute to AP ATP production. And one of the things with um, mitochondria specifically, we know from research that you really only realize about 50% of the benefits that you get uh, in your weekly mileage um, in, in terms of that, uh, kind of how it's applied to your aerobic, aerobic fitness. Um, now obviously that's a little skewed since it's, there's not an exact number there, um, but basically what I'm trying to say is that let's say that you ran 25 miles a week. You would get um, about 50% of the benefits uh, from that in terms of the development of your mitochondria, in terms of how long it they take to develop and then how long they, they take to the kind of cycle, cycle in and out. And then uh, for the next week, you would get another 50% of that benefit. So you might get about 75% of the benefits of running 25 miles a week, and then 87% of the benefits of running eight, uh, 25 miles a week. So you can see that there is, it, it's a long and difficult process to get from, to get to the point where you're even maximizing the benefits that you're getting from kind of developing your aerobic system. And this research and this chart is really just to show you um, how long it is, or I guess I should say how long you need to develop the aerobic system and how much work you need to put in in order to make gains. Now that's important because th now we're going to talk about the next step, which is what I call the continuum thresholds. So when we look at uh, training and we look at the workouts that you're doing, if we know that the primary mechanism we want to hit is your aerobic system, if we know that, and we also know that it's going to take a lot of time spent training your aerobic system, then we know that the workouts that we do, we want to err on the side of doing more work on the aerobic system side. So what I'm going to do now is actually put up an image on the screen and I'm going to show you kind of how it works um, using a graph. So we can see by looking at this graph that the different race distances 
uh, require different contributions from you know kind of what we call the energy continuum or the energy spectrum and we can see in the marathon that primarily we're talking about the aerobic system maybe moving into a little bit of the aerobic threshold um, as you get further into the race and maybe at the end maybe a little bit of lactate threshold as you're kind of finishing and, and kicking with the 5k and 10k we can see that it's a little bit you're still relying primarily on the aerobic system but we're we are incorporating some of the other energy systems lactate threshold anaerobic threshold and the anaerobic system as you're finishing that kick for a strong finish one thing to note um, that is important with the spectrum and looking at this graph is that i think a lot of times when runners think about tempo runs or lactate threshold we think of them as finite points so you move from I'm doing a lactate threshold run to I am doing an aerobic threshold run or I am doing an anaerobic workout there's those energy systems aren't so black and white it, it's not like you all of a sudden uh, I'm running 930 pace now I'm using all lactate threshold or and now I'm running 940 pace and so it's all aerobic threshold or all aerobic system that's really not how it works uh, there's kind of a blend or bleed into the systems depending on you know what your ability levels are but there's a blend into those paces so 940 might be something that's primarily aerobic but still incorporating a little bit of lactate obviously you're producing some lactate as you're getting faster so there's a little bit of a blend there and that's why this chart has some shading that kind of tries to indicate that and that's important because what we know is that First, there is a much greater dependency on energy systems in the slower range rather than in the faster range. So take, for example, the half marathon. The race relies primarily on the lactate threshold zone with a large portion of the energy still coming from the aerobic system and very little is needed from the anaerobic, anaerobic system. Now, that means that the predominance of your training needs to occur in these heavily used systems, the aerobic system and the lactate threshold zone. Now, if you miss the mark on a training session, it's better to miss running on the slow side rather than on the fast side. So for example, with our training schedules, we always give you a, a, a range of paces to run. So it may be something like um, go and do a run four miles at 10 minutes to 10.10 or 10.15 pace. And I think we generally see athletes always wanting to run 10 minutes a mile if, if that's what's assigned, or maybe even saying I need to be 9.55 just to be a little bit faster. But as we can see from this graph and this chart of how these energy systems work, it's actually better if we assign you a pace to be 10 flat to 1010 to actually be 1010 rather than 955. And that's because 1010 is going to perhaps bleed a little bit more into the aerobic system rather than 955 bleeding a little bit more into the anaerobic threshold where that's not the primary or it's not a much, as much of a contribution to the uh, overall performance of a half marathon as the aerobic system. So that's why running a little bit slower is actually might actually even be a little bit better. So I think this really comes into play in a couple reasons. Um, I think primarily it's, it's when we look at a workout and we stubbornly try to go out and hit or exceed our workout places that we're assigned, whether it be your coached by Runners Connect uh, coach or not, um, despite uh, a being that the, that's being the upper upper range of your pace assignments, or it's not being, uh, or you're pushing harder than you might feel. So, for example, you're just not feeling really good. So, ten flat pace for that day doesn't necessarily feel as easy as it should, um, and you still try to hit ten flat, even though ten ten might be a little bit more of the effort that you were looking for. Um, that's kind of where I I, I think the uh, this continuum really applies to your training and why it's important to understand the science. So I know this is a little bit of a different video than what we've done before because um, it's a little bit more technical, um, but I, I was kind of hoping that the idea with using these graphs and me kind of talking about it would help a little bit better explain uh, what we mean by the thresholds and, and, the, and the pace assignments and why it's not necessarily better to be training harder or, or training faster than it is potentially slower or a little bit easier. Um, so please do um, comment on this video. I want to hear your comments. I want to see what you think, uh, if I explained it well. Um, if not, I definitely would like to take the time in the comments to uh, comment a little bit more, give you some more details. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. It was a pleasure doing this, and uh, we'll see you soon.